So, Council of Kennedy Mora, I believe in fact. Point of order is addressing me. There's no point of order, and it's a public forum, and you will be quiet or you will remove yourself from the meeting. Make up your mind. The Kaipara Council voted 6 out of 10 to disestablish their Māori ward come the local elections in 2025. Why is this an issue? Well, a good democracy has engagement from everyone, and unfortunately, democracy in Aotearoa favours a particular demographic. Our political system was designed for the property-owning class, which is disproportionately rich Pākehā. This has led to poor Māori participation at general and local levels of democracy. Māori wards were brought in as an attempt to increase Māori participation for a better democracy. So what's gone wrong? In 2021, Nanaya Mahuta made it easier for councils to establish Māori wards. The property-owning class, fearful of a more representative democracy, went into a frenzy. Prior to the changes, a group ironically called Democracy Northland was furious. They were organising for the removal of Māori wards prior to the changes, but were beaten to the punch by Fire Nanaya. So they got organised and nasty. Countless personal attacks came out against Nanaya, attacks that Karen Chaw wouldn't dream of. Three Waters was kicking off around that time, which pissed off farm owners, racists and local councils, the exact cohort we're talking about, the property owning class. This was also coming off the back of the government's COVID-19 response, which created an anti-labour sentiment. Various fringe groups seized on this moment and coordinated their messaging against Three Waters, framing it as an asset grab, not just by central government, but by Māori specifically, spreading a false racist narrative across the country. Due to the low voter turnout in local elections and the manufactured anti-Māori narrative, Democracy Northland were able to get one of their members to become mayor of Kaipara, Craig Jepson, seen here walking the markets with New Zealand First's Shane Jones. Only 20% of those eligible to vote in Kaipara voted for Craig to be their mayor. Backing him up as deputy mayor is Jonathan Larsden, who is an ACT Party affiliate. Another one of Democracy Northland's core members who spoke to the council prior to the vote is Frank Newman. Along with his wife Muriel Newman, a founding member of the ACT Party and once their deputy leader, they run NZCPR, where they spread hateful lies about Te Iwi Māori. They are the ones responsible for supplying New Zealand First affiliate Julian Batchelor with information he used during his anti-co-governance roadshow. Uh, and Frank and his buddies are responsible for some of the racist leaflets we here in Northland often find in our letterboxes. But of course, Northland has one of the highest percentages of Māori in Aotearoa. Not only that, but our culture is strong here, allowing for non-racist Pākehā to understand us, removing that fear of the unknown, which means that this part of the country has the best chance of of having Māori and Māori allies in power positions in local government. Like what we see at the Far North District Council, which has a Māori mayor, a Māori ward which speaks directly to Māori aspirations, and several other tangata whenua sitting in general ward seats who aren't expected to advocate for wider Māori aspirations, but simply for the aspirations of the Far North in general. Must be terrifying for the property owning class here in Te Nota, which is why despite the North being so Māori friendly, we also have the highest concentration of organised racists, which has created the problem in Kaipara. So what do we need to do? Well. We need to get organised, and until we have tino ranga tiratanga, Māori self-determination, we need to get our people enrolled and to vote in the current system. Kaipara needs to think about its candidates for the upcoming election, and these candidates will need to work together to ensure there's no vote splitting, which happened at the last election, another factor giving Craig Jepson the edge. Because of course, these groups thrive where there is division. We also have to be aware of the vested interests that these people have and how they manipulate public opinions for their agenda. Craig himself may not be a racist, but it's suspected that he wants to invest in the controversial and expensive waste to energy scheme that's proposed for Kaipara, something he can help push through with his powers as mayor. This project will of course have huge pushback from Tangata Whenua, and so siding with actual racists becomes a strategy. Julian Batchelor is the same. He's involved in a land dispute where he was wrongly sold sacred lands in Rafati. And the Newmans are known for an incident where they wanted to establish some coastal infrastructure, but Tangata Whenua refused to support them. At the core of it, these New Zealanders are upset that Māori customary rights are a thing at all. They're upset that respect for indigenous peoples can trump the sacrosanct concept within colonial ideology, which is 
private property, that an individual can purchase land and do whatever they want with it despite how it affects the community. This aligns with what corporations are afraid of, thus why we're seeing the richest people in the country donating to groups like the ACT Party, New Zealand First and National, who view Te Tiriti o Waitangi not as a document which protects indigenous rights, but a document that is simply red tape preventing corporations from unfettered extraction of our precious resource. So, kia u e hoa kia manawanui. As we start to see the next generation shine through, kapu te ruhaka haol te rangatahi, we're seeing this older generation making their final desperate attempts at taking power. Nō reira, kia mau. The new dawn isn't coming, it's here. And these hard and fast moves made by these desperate individuals are only going to fast track the rest of us to collectivise for a better Aotearoa for everyone.